Hello everyone, we don't want the native God here. So in this video, we are going to look at the approach we take or the formulas we use when we are looking at problems where we consider frictional losses in the pipe, right? So the formulas we use are called Darcy's and Shears' formula, right? Now as far as Darcy's formula, it has two variations, right? One variation is the velocity variation and the other one is the flow rate variation right so if we've been given the velocity right then it is much easier right to calculate the head losses due to friction if we use the velocity variation right so as far as losses formula when you've been given or if you have right velocity it's hf is equal to 2 times f times l times v squared over g times d right now as you see here i've labeled what each of these terms stands for right so hf or f h sub f is the frictional head loss right in the pipe or the frictional head loss of the water from the one section to the second section right and then f is the coefficient of friction of course that is dimensionless and then you have the l which is the pipe length in meters right v is the average velocity of the water right average velocity because when we are considering uh, friction losses right the pipe or the problems we look at tend to have a constant diameter right so the problems we look at based on um, problems where we do not ignore losses or where we consider frictional head losses right the pipes in the problems tend to have constant a constant diameter so because the diameter is constant right it means the velocity is going to be set is going to be the same throughout the fluid's motion right hence if we're looking at two sections of the pipe right essentially v1 and v2 will be the same Right, hence I've labeled the velocity as being the average velocity of the water, right? And then of course G is the gravitational acceleration and D is the pipe diameter, right? So again, if you've been given the velocity, then it's much easier to calculate the frictional head loss, right, by using this formula, right, or the very the velocity variation. And then if you've been given right the discharge of the water or if you've been given the flow rate of the water right it's much easier to just use the flow rate variation right which is this one here right so the flow rate variation of calculating the frictional head loss right hf will be equal to f times l times q squared over the 3.026 times d to the exponent 5 right now we've already covered the other terms right the only term we've been covered here is q and as we know, Q is the flow rate or the discharge, right? Which be which will be in cubic meters per second, right? So those are the two formulas that we use under Darcy's formula, right? Now you can use any of the two variations; doesn't really matter, right? So meaning, if you've been given the velocity, right, you can calculate Q. Remember, Q is equal to a times v right so you could use this formula to calculate the, the the flow rate right and then you can substitute it in the flow rate variation of um Darcy's formula right right now before we go to Shiz's formula right just want us to quickly look at the kind of cases we are going to be looking at and um, Darcy and Shears' formula, right? There's basically just two cases, right? So one case is where you have a pipe connecting two reservoirs, right? And the other part, and the other case is where you just have a horizontal pipe, right? So like I mentioned earlier, right? Um, under Darcy and Shears' formula, the pipe tends to have a constant diameter. Right, so we only look at problems where the pipe in the system has a constant diameter. Right, 
So let's first look at how you would approach a problem based on a pipe connecting two reservoirs, right? Now, as you see here, you have two reservoirs, right? Which are connected by, which are connected by this pipe here, right? Now, regarding how we apply Pinoli's here, right? Remember Pinoli's equations or Pinoli's theorem can be applied between any two points in the fluid's motion, right? Now, what, what happens here is that the water is moving from this reservoir, right, to this reservoir, right, through the use of the pipe connecting the two reservoirs, right? Now, based on, based on where we have the most information, right, that is where we apply our Pinoli's, um, what is this, Pinoli's theorem, right? So Pinoli's theorem, right, is applied between any two points where we have the most information, right? Now, in cases where you have a pipe connecting two reservoirs, right, we tend to have the most information between right between this point right so we're going to take this point as point one so between this point right so in this reservoir the where the water level is right so we take that as point one and then where the water level is in the second reservoir right we take that as point two because that is where we have the most information right or that is where we tend to have the most information right normally or in typical problems where we consider frictional losses right between two reservoirs that are connected by a pipe right we normally have the most information at the water levels of the two reservoirs right so they don't necessarily give you information right in the pipe hence we just look at the two reservoirs, the water level of the two reservoirs as being 0.1 and 0.2, right? Now, in terms of height, right? Because remember, in applying Pinoli's theorem, you have to have three energies. So your pressure energy, your kinetic energy, as well as your um, potential energy. Now, in terms of, or as far as potential energy, you know that you have to have our h which is a reference from the ground right now as far as h1 right h1 is a reference from the ground to the water level of the first reservoir right so h1 is a reference from the ground to the water level of the first reservoir so i made a mistake here so this is supposed to be it's supposed to be there, right? Right, right. So H one is reference from the ground to the water level of the first reservoir, and then H two is also reference from the ground to the water level of the second reservoir, right? Right, and then of course you have the length of the pipe and you have the coefficient of friction, right, of the water in the pipe, right? So that's how you would get your, what is this, your potential energy, right? And then as far as pressure, right, as you see, because the two reservoirs are open to the atmosphere, right, the pressure at the water level, Right at the water level of the two reservoirs is such that it is atmospheric pressure. Right now, in hydraulic systems, right for mechanical techniques, and for we don't necessarily care about atmospheric pressure. Right, we care more about um, gauge pressure. Right, so because at the water level for the first and second reservoir we have atmospheric pressure. Right, we take the gauge pressure as being equal to zero at those at those points. Right, so in applying Pinoli's between point one and point two, 
right so we're going to use the we are going to use the variation of pinolis that is particular to pressure right so applying pinolis between 0.1 and 0.2 right we're going to have p1 plus half rho of v1 squared plus uh, rho g h1 is equal to is equal to p2 plus half rho v2 squared plus rho g h2 right now because we are considering losses right we need to have another pressure that will be due to the frictional head losses right so the frictional head losses in the pipe right so here we are going to add the frictional head loss but it has to be in terms of pressure because the variation of pinolis that we are using is in terms of pressure right so here we're going to have plus rho g hf right so that's how you consider frictional losses right that's how you consider frictional losses as far as pinolis equation right you're going to add the frictional head loss right on the right hand side of the of the equation right because remember at point one there are no frictional losses right frictional losses occur in the pipe so that's why we consider frictional losses on the second section right or after how could i put this so that's why we consider frictional losses right after the water has passed the first reservoir and has entered the second reservoir right now as mentioned right because p1 and p2 are atmospheric pressure right number one they will be equal two we don't really care about um, atmospheric pressure we care more about gauge pressure and the gauge pressure at 0.1 and 0.2 is equal to zero right hence this hence so let's say p1 is equal to p2 right so if p1 and p2 are equal essentially they will cancel each other out right now as far as velocity the velocity of the water in the reservoir right is essentially negligible right if the velocity in the reservoir is negligible then we can simply take it as being equal to zero the reason for that is we cannot quite tell the instantaneous what is this velocity of the water in the reservoir right the water tends to move so slowly from the first reservoir to the second reservoir that the change in kinetic energy right as the water moves from the from the first reservoir to the second reservoir right is basically neg negligible right so the change in kinetic energy between the first and second reservoir right or between the first and second water level of the water in the first and second reservoir is negligible right so you can look at it from the perspective of right if you're looking at or if you're trying to determine the growth of a child right you don't necessarily see the rate at which the child is growing right instantaneously right it's just one minute the child is short then the next the child has grown right um, some considerable height right but the growth is so slow that you can't really see it right so applying that very looking at it from that perspective right we tend to say that the velocity in the reservoirs is what is negligible because the water is moving so slowly between the two reservoirs that the instantaneous velocity right we tend to take as being negligible right so essentially v1 is equal to v2 and both we take as being equal to zero right 
and then of course you're gonna have some value of the height and some value of h2 as well so rewriting the Pinoli's equation right p1 and p2 we no longer have right so essentially this cancels and then this as well cancels so you're only left with rho g h1 is equal to rho g h2 plus rho g hf right now as you see the three terms that we are left with have a common factor right rho g right so the rho g since it's common in all three fact in all three terms right it's going to cancel so the rho g is going to cancel and you are left with h1 is equal to h2 plus hf right and then in solving for hf it means you need to transpose h2 so hf essentially will be equal to h1 minus h2 right now going back to our diagram right now as you see here right as you see here h1 minus h2 right this would be the change in h the change in h which is equal to h1 minus h2 right so the change in h is is, is basically the difference in the two water levels right of the water of the two reservoirs right so essentially if you're looking at two rev two reservoirs being connected by a pipe right to get hf or to get the frictional head loss it is essentially equal to what the change in water levels of the two reservoirs right so essentially hf is equal to the change in h right so meaning what meaning you don't we do not necessarily have to be given h1 and h2 if we've been given the change in water levels right if you've been given the change in water levels then you can simply just say hf is equal to the change in the two um what is this? the change in water levels of the two reservoirs right and then once you have hf right then you are able to calculate or then you are able to use any one of these Darcy's formula variations, right? Depending on what you are looking for. So if say you are looking for the velocity of the water in the pipe, right? So if you if in the question you're looking at, you're supposed to cover the velocity, right, in the pipe, right? Since you have HF, you can then go back to, or we can make use of the velocity variation right you can make use of this formula here you will have calculated hf by applying pinolis between the two reservoirs right and then of course you will have to be given the coefficient of friction the length of the pipe you already know g g is constant and then the diameter of the pipe as well right or if maybe you have the velocity but they're actually looking for the diameter of the pipe you can use the very same formula right so whatever it is that you're looking for right you can use this variation of Pinoli's once you have HF, right? So that's the first case.